Cool. So I tell you what, I'll just do, uh, so yeah. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, really pleased uh, to be joined by Stuart McMillan uh, at South Ayrshire, who's the uh, project implementation coordinator. And Stuart is going to share with us the uh, the, the South Ayrshire uh, strategic change program journey, and um, with with particular focus, I believe, on on sort of uh, process change and process mapping. So uh, over to you, Stuart. All right, thanks, Nick. So, yep, my name's Stuart. I um, started out at South Asia Council just in June 2021, and I'm going to talk you through a wee bit about our programme, what projects we've got, um, some of the strengths and weaknesses about the programme, and I'm going to talk you through some of the tools that we're using to um, sort of manage the benefits realisation around this programme, because it is very much a, a benefits-led programme. That is the real focus um, about this one. So, I will talk you through that and if you've got any questions please just show at any point. So here's a little bit about our programme or story so far. So back in November 2020 our director um, was very keen that there was some form of change programme within the council. I don't think there had been one for a while or certainly not not then. There might be a couple of attempts at setting something up that didn't quite get through. So that was eventually approved. The South East Way Strategic Strategic Change Programme, which is not that easy to say, um, was launched and in, in approved, sorry, in November 2020. And at the same time, or just after that, in January 2021, Best Value um, or Audit Scotland started their Best Value of the Council. So later on that, in that year, June 2021, is when um, myself and the team started. It was myself as coordinator and two project officers. Um, we started um, that time and we had about 21 projects or so on the on the programme, so they were already set up, they were already there, there'd been a bit of engagement with senior officers to work at what projects should be on the programme, and they were there set up for us to, to deliver. So we spent a bit of time getting the governance in place, so what do you need to do to deliver a programme of change across the council, which hadn't really been used to any of this kind of stuff in, in the past and was very, very new to it. So and my approach to this is that we need to be quite slick and quite um, agile with it. So the projects are delivered in a way that it's, it meets the needs of the customer, so it meets the needs of the services. So we need to make sure that we're not burdening them with updating action plans or updating project scopes or attending loads and loads of meetings, but their focus is on, is on actually delivery of projects. And I suppose the project officers are the ones that do all of the, the groundwork in the background. So that, that's been the approach. But we did set up all the governance. So the governance included our change board, the strategic change executive, um, and that now meets on a um, two monthly basis. It's designed, it's basically been set up to sort of govern the programme, govern the projects, the point of escalation for any, I suppose, major issues. Most of them are dealt with within the project and also approve projects to the programme. So that was set up in July. By August, we had those 22 projects and we really sort of spent that time defining those projects setting up the governance and of course mapping out how we're going to achieve benefits and that was um, detailed within a benefit realisation plan and I'm going to talk to you a lot about that as we go on. In October just last year we had our, the best value audit report published, no major surprises, so sort of talked about why council needs a, a more project approach to delivering business change and that was really sort of the, the backdrop as to why the team was set up. So. It was good because they had a number of different actions, a number of uh, recommendations, and we had achieved them, achieved them all within um, the time scale that set us. So when we report back to um, as part of that best value audit, we can see that we have achieved those recommendations and we're implementing the programme going forward. And um, we got some good news in March just this year when all the staff were made permanent. We'd all joined in two year contracts. So We've got budget to to uh, remain in place for for the future for, for for all of our life, and also to recruit two additional officers. We have recruit, recruited uh, uh, we've recruited one additional officer, and we're still trying to recruit an additional one um, to make up four. So it's it's not been that easy that recruitment actually. So I'm happy to take any any thoughts and how we can improve that recruitment process and and, and identify the right person for the team. And now we are here. We are in. September, I suppose, but we've now got our benefit trackers in place for all of our projects. We've completed three projects, which is great, and it's really important that we see projects come onto the programme and get delivered and, and complete. 
um, we can't be sitting with the same projects on the programme in two years' time or so. So that's the real focus, and we're now up to some 33 projects. And I'm going to quickly show you what those projects are, um, and I'll just summarise a couple of them. So we have um, six themes that the projects are sort of aligned to, delivering our priorities, services that are sustainable, maximising the council's assets, customers at the heart, digitally confident and a workforce for the future. So all of the projects on the programme have to align to one or, to one or more of those um, those themes. And what I've done is I've put this slide up based on which service of where the projects are. And you can see there's a very large skew towards a place directorate. That's like neighbourhood services, asset management, housing, etc. So predominant all the projects are in there. I think it is maybe just over half. But the focus for us has to be on going to the people services, community care and developing more projects here. And we're seeing more and more of those projects coming forward, actually. And we're certainly seeing more projects that are of a corporate nature. I think when we first came in in June 2021, there were just the two projects that were in that corporate services. So we've been able to develop more and that's our plan going forward. Um, so these are all our projects and that, as I said, the focus is really in getting engagement with other services and developing ideas. That's really important for us. So a lot of the projects come from service leads or um, senior management, but it's really important we get projects and ideas coming up from people who are actually delivering services on the ground. So I mentioned our benefit realisation approach. It's absolutely crucial and fundamental to us. Um, and as a benefits led programme, as I said, um, I think I think this has been, certainly been borne out in how we've delivered the programme so far. Our projects, if they say are delayed or don't meet a particular time scale or don't come off the project plan, that's not as big an issue for us as, this, as if they don't deliver the benefits. So, yeah, it's important projects run on time, etc. That is important, but this is local government. We've got COVID, we've got stretched resources. Most projects don't run on time. Um, but that is sort of almost secondary importance. The real importance for us is dead find what those benefits are, moving away from projects which are about delivering the delivering the project to actually identifying what that project is actually going to achieve and then mapping out a way to do that. So our benefits-led programme has four stage processes that the project officers work with all the project teams to identify. So that step one is identify what those benefits are. It's almost like a high level, right? We're doing this project, what are the benefits? What do we think? And it's like sketching them out to begin with. When we move into stage two, it's a bit more detailed behind it. How do we get that baseline information so we can build a target and, a, and, a, and a, an ambition on top of that? I have to say that's quite a difficult stage because I think we've got lots of data in the council, but it's maybe not managed and mined in the right way. So the guys are finding it quite difficult to gather that information and, um, and present it in, a, in an easy format. So that's quite a difficulty. We do need to look at that in a corporately, I think, and become a, a data rich council and a data driven council, I suppose, and we'll be looking at that. But that, that stage is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Once that's approved, um, sorry, once those baseline, once those benefits have been baselined, then they're proposed for approval and they're approved by the senior responsible owner. So they say, yep, cool, that looks great. When there's cash flow savings, etc., they need to. Yes. And and then once we do that, we're going to project implementation. So the project will then follow its path and its plan, as I said before, probably not stick to its timescale, but it will implement the project and it aligned to that. To that will be the benefits. What we'll often find is that some projects will complete. So, for example, the system will be implemented. Great, the guys or the operatives have their new devices, and then that's complete. So they've all got their new devices, and then they can close the, uh, complete the project. But the benefit realization part will continue on. So some of those benefits could be um, faster application process. It could be reduction in mileage because we're using devices. It could be improved customer response and customer satisfaction levels. So the benefit realisation part of that continues even after the project is complete. So it does mean there's a role for the project officers within each project from the very, very beginning, from the evolution of the project all the way to the benefit realisation and after the sort of normal completion date, which I think will work well. 
So we've got three types of benefits that we capture. They're cashable, uh, quantitative and qualitative. So our casual ones are, as you can imagine, a reduction in, in, in costs for something. So no longer spending money on consultancy or fuel or fuel or something like that. So, but we also have income generation as well. That's a, it's a slowly becoming a bigger issue, a bigger opportunity for us, maybe not an issue, a bigger opportunity for us to look at ways of um, finding revenue streams. So we've got a couple of projects on the programme so far that are designed to do that. So cash flow ones is big, obviously there's some parts of the council that are more interested in that than others, um, but it's a big push for us to see if we can identify cash flow benefits and it's important we develop our approach for that as also. Then we've got quantitative, which is basically anything with a number, which isn't doesn't have a pound sign in front of it. So um, what are we seeing? We're seeing the number of bins emptied, reduction in customer complaints, that kind of thing. And then of course there's qualitative, which is about um, behavioural change almost, you know, improved referral mechanisms or staff um, having a, a more um, a better designed or more training, I suppose. So <clears throat> that's that's the three benefits and that's how we categorise them. And we're working through that. I think it's really important to move projects from stage one and two quite quickly and into implementation. And the reach out there shows how we've started off. So if you look at March 22, that's in the blue, the blue blocks there. So most of the projects were at stage one and stage two. And what the focus has been is trying to shift or almost invert that um, that that graph where we get more at stage three and stage four. And we've been trying to do that, and you can see that all the August. Um, Return shown in red there. Obviously, when projects are approved, we had another 10 projects have been approved in the last couple of months, so they will naturally start at stage one. But we are showing good progress in moving forward into stages uh, three and four, which is where we need to be because we need to move these projects forward. So that's the programme, that's how we set up. We're a year and a bit in, and um, just give me one second. I'm going to talk to you about our um, what's working, what's maybe not working, what's maybe not working quite so well. So I think with with anything like this, you need some corporate buy-in, you need some some leadership, and we definitely have that. So our our change board, our strategic change executive, has all of the senior officers within the council. So that is the decision makers. So they sit there and they can see what we're doing, they can see the projects, and they're engaged from it, and that is really really helpful. It's one program, so it sits there, the change program, and it sits across the entire council. There's not different change business change operations or transformation teams in different services. It's one program, and that is, I think, really, really important. It's much more, it's much better coordinated, and we can see where there's different things happening, and we can make sure there's a bit more collaboration around them and how we deliver these things. So that's really important. We now have a corporate resource to deliver this stuff. We didn't have it before. There wasn't a change programme before. So again, that's really important. And we can see there's more and more requests coming in from services, not just to deliver projects, but to facilitate meetings or facilitate sessions and that kind of thing. So that's good. A lot of it's about a culture change, so that won't be that won't change overnight, but that's where we need to be. So the fact that we've got people in place, a team of four plus myself, and that is really helping us push that forward. And as I said before, focusing benefits, that's that's massive. But changing the mindset from going from talking about and thinking about project delivery to benefit delivery um, is, is, is helping us really sort of get an angle and focus for the projects as well. And I think we've got some comms channels there. I think it's also a challenge to talk, talk about in a second. But we've got a clear remit from our best value audit and we're really focusing on delivery rather than orders um, rather than being um, document heavy and I suppose it's important that we have a, that balance because you need to show governance so we had an audit um, an internal audit looked at all of our processes and documentation they were happy with it so yeah it's good to be document like but you also need to make sure you govern it well so there's that balance but I think we've got that right so far in terms of our challenges um, quite a lot I think um, we need to ma measure the impact of what we do and I'll we'll talk about one of the tools we're going to use for that I talked about data and to, for baselining it is a bit of a challenge and um, to get that data and find out where it is and who owns it and how we can get access to it. So that's what we're going to start looking at over the next few months is where can we get more data and can we pull it together. It's not going to be an easy thing, but 
I think we just need to start mapping out what our data is, where it is. And I think many, many councils are maybe a wee bit ahead of the curve on that. So happy to hear any ideas and how we can approach that best. And I think we need to sort of, um, there are challenges to change the way people think as well. So this is focusing people to look at, not just if you've got a project and a change programme, but look at the benefits of the work that you're doing already. So that's a challenge for us, but and you know not everyone has happy with change, but so far we're seeing some good things from some good people. So um, I'd say that's going okay at the moment, and we need to start our communication channels um, and make sure a little bit better. We do have some comms channels, so that is working. But are we actually reaching people? Do we reach the right people? Is anyone interested in what we're doing? If they are, can we make it clear and concise and interesting for them. So rather than just long newsletters, is it a wee bit of animation, a wee bit of cartoons, etc. Just to maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know if you've average maybe prefer to sit and watch a two minute cartoon and read a 15 page document. Um, but that's maybe just me. So and, and I suppose the next challenge I've talked about before is getting those ideas beyond that traditional change activity within that place directorate, looking at other approach systems within finance, within HR and see well, what, what else can we do here as a something. So that's our challenges so far in terms of what's, how, how we're approaching this. So I talked about how we, how do we measure what we're doing. So if we've got projects that have um, cash flow benefits and that's fairly straightforward, we can say, well, it's going to save X or it's going to bring in Y. But how do we measure productivity? So a lot of the projects we have will move people from a manual process into a much more digital place so how do you map that out how do you measure the impact of that and one of the tools we're using is engage process modeler so this is an example of what the project officers are using to try to define the productivity approach and how we're making a difference with the new projects that are coming in so i think most of it, everyone will be maybe familiar with the assets and to be concept and and process map. So again, this is a um, this is a bit of software we've procured from Engage Process. And the officers will sit down with staff within projects and try and map out what happens right now. So this is just an example. It's not actually a specific project, but it's similar to a couple of them we were looking at just now. So you can see here they've, they've mapped out a process at some 10 or 16 steps all together, depending on which, which route you go down. But you can see there's a reliance in Excel, there's a reliance in manual printing, updating resources. So we can see there's, that's a real manual process there. And it takes all in all some, I don't know, I can show you that at the end actually. But what, what we can see here is that we can identify how long each step takes. So it takes, I don't know, what is that, two hours for process one to be identified. To process the file, it takes an additional amount of time. So we can map out how long each step takes. And we can also map out who's involved or what function is involved each step. So that allows us to capture, OK, well, this process as it currently sits is on the face of it. As we look at it, it's fairly manual. It's using spreadsheets and it's fairly predominantly admin who are involved in this and it takes X amount of time. So that's our baseline for measuring how productive we are at the moment. Then, of course, the team will then look at the to be process. So a fairly manual process at the moment. Um, I forgot I this fancy automation. And uh, here, there we go. There you go. So that's I've shown it up the various sort of manual process, team, which teams involved and how long it takes. So here's a to be process. You can see what's basically happened here is we've taken a manual process and we've um, swapped it, put in a, a computer system of, of some kind or some software, etc. So Here's what's happened. We can see that the manual steps are, are changed significantly and, and replaced by some software and um, represented by a computer and a server here. So again, what we capture is the information around, sorry, the manual process, those three, five, six, seven, 11, 14, 15, those steps there are sort of being replaced by a, an automating part. So what we can do is we can capture all that information and present it in a table like this, which gives us some metrics and some data to improve um, or to measure the performance on. So, and as this example, it takes eight hours and 16 minutes processing time and the to be it's just under six hours. So again, that's a saving of 
a, a reduction in almost thirty percent of processing time. We can see who's involved in that, which teams, so it's admins. We're cutting down admins' time in this from almost eight hours to five and a half. And again, that's good. That's great because it means the admin can go and do something more value added. So they can cut down on these steps, which are maybe not add a huge amount of value and go and do something else to support the team. Maybe it's working on a new project or it's supporting delivery of something else. But it means you can go and work and do something, something different. So this is allowing us to evidence productivity improvements. And not all projects will need this, but some of them will. Certainly when we move from our digital and sorry, from our manual process into digital, that will be a real help for us. It will allow services to take a step back, look at their processes and see how they can improve things. And even if we've got that to be in here, we'll map this for other processes within the team and they might find that actually, you know what, we can even make this slightly more um, slicker. We can put something in here that makes it a little bit easier. We can put some more automation in which will allow um, even greater benefit. So even though we get a to be process, that shouldn't really be the end. We should revisit this, but we've now got it. We've got it mapped out and we can take it forward. So if the challenge now for us is to really take that forward and move it into all of our projects. It's really important that we do this with the post pro, uh, project team. So the people who are actually delivering the, the service, we can't really have, I don't think, one of the officers reviewing things and come up with this themselves. It needs to be validated with the team and they need to sign that off. So they will, so we will have the senior uh, officer, senior project team members sign these maps off to say, yep, that is accurate. That is exactly how, how things work. And then of course, it's really important that You've got your as is, you've got your to be. Is your to be accurate? You know, does it, is it actually the same? Is it actually the, same, the case two months in, six months down the line? So we have to make sure that we continue to validate the to be and it is following that. You know, what happens if we just go back to the way it was or the, the software's not working or it's out of support, etc., something like that. So we can't go back to that. We need to make sure the change is embedded across the service and the project. So that's really important, but there is, I think, a strength here in that we have the project team involved all the way through and they sign off and they're happy with it and that takes us forward. And then we can start looking at what those quantitative benefits are. So we can see what's the reduction this time and it allows us to process more applications quicker or get more done within a particular day. So those are productivity improvements that we can evidence and map out there. So that's how we're doing the projects. I'm conscious of time, so I'm just going to quickly talk to you about what our, our next steps are for the, for the programme. And I've probably covered a lot of these already. So it's moving these projects into benefit realisation, quantifying and really getting the, um, the, the, the benefit trackers in place with all of the activity and time skills and, and things we want to measure and improving our communication. That's really important for me. If anybody wants to hear about the programme, they know where to go. There'll be a lot of people in the council who don't want to hear about it and I mean I have to take that on the chin but you know if people want to sometimes want to know what the council is doing so we need to make sure there's a space for that and if the more more projects we generate then the more coverage we get especially in those services which have not got a huge amount of projects on the program so far so that's what I wanted to cover with you today and uh, Nick happy to hand over to yourself now